So, we managed to shine a light on Port Metro Vancouver last week. We uh, sent a question along to Evan Solomon for his program Power and Politics. He has a feature called My QP, My Question Period. And he was able to get the uh, Minister for Fisheries and Oceans to come on the program and attempt to answer the question. Take a look. My name is Maya bridger -Dens. Behind me is Roberts Bank, just south of Vancouver. This area is home to a rich variety of birds and wildlife and is recognized as one of the most important ecosystems in Canada. You can also see Port Metro Vancouver's container terminal, which they want to double in size by adding a huge man-made island to be built further out into the Gulf of Georgia. Evan, my question is this. With the recent changes to the Canada Marine Act, as well as other actions being taken by the federal government, will Port Metro Vancouver be able to ignore the provisions of the Species at Risk Act, thereby threatening the resident orca population? Thanks. Joining me now to discuss the effect of the change in law is the Minister of Fisheries and Oceans, Gail Shea. Minister Shea, great to see you here. Thank you for having well, me. Well, you heard Maya's question. If Port Metro Vancouver or any other port buys the land it occupies and becomes federal property, does the Species at Risk Act still apply? It certainly does still apply, and I want to thank Maya very much for interest in this subject. Killer whales are benefiting from the strong protection of the Species at Risk Act, and the application of the Act will not be affected by the ownership of the, either the land or the water because it applies to the actual species. Let me just read you what we've obtained here in our producer, Jennifer Chevalier, because there seems to be a contradiction in the port's environmental impact statement. And, and Maya, if you're listening, turn to page 75, and it says here the whales will be affected. Quote, the project in combination with past projects and reasonably foreseeable projects would result in a continued significant cumulative effect to southern resident killer whales. But then literally the next page, it concludes the project would not have a significant adverse environmental effect on the southern resident killer whales. We did ask the port to come on the program today. They, they declined. But it seems on one hand they're saying it will have a cumulative effect that is significant. And then on the other hand, they say it won't. Why the contradiction? What, what's your view? Well, I can't speak to that contradiction, but at the end of the day, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans will have to uh, make that inter determination. So it's very important that we have all the information, that we do the proper studies around this before any approvals are given. Okay, so can a project like this be given the go-ahead if it affects the critical habitat to an endangered the endangered species like the killer whale? Well, of course, the critical habitat is protected under the Species at Risk Act, so we would have to look at all of the factors uh, uh, surrounding this application, um, and a determination will be made at that time whether or not uh, these risks can be mitigated or not. And if they can't be, then you know, we have to protect, at the end of the day, we have to protect that critical habitat. You know, again, people like Maya are wondering if, if there's a shipping lane that goes right through the critical habitat of killer whales, how do you mitigate that the, you know, from the whale's point of view? That becomes very dangerous. So, That's correct. So those are all details that will right. be all part of the process. But at the end of the day, uh, the killer whales have to be protected because they are protected under legislation. All right, I've got to leave it there. The Minister of Fisheries and Oceans, Gail Shea, thank you so much. Thank you. The piece raises a couple of questions, obviously. Uh, the first one would be, what exactly is the port's position in regard to the Species at Risk Act and the killer whales? Evan uh, identified a clear contradiction in the port's own document. So we'd like answers to that. And the other thing that is intriguing and puzzling is what exactly is the port trying to hide? Why is it afraid to go on national television and uh, have its say on something that's fairly important?